Hey there folks. So somewhat recently I did a few videos on the newer Cloud Game Store kits. Uh, I got the uh, 2.45 inch kit. Um, I did a video on that in this shell. If I recall correctly when I did the video, the screen was not laminated, uh, but I went back and I actually did DIY laminate it. Uh, it is kind of air gapped with the lens. Uh, and I did put in the description uh, an imager album of what I had to do to laminate it, but I didn't end up putting it in the video um, because I, I figured it wasn't something that a lot of people were going to do. Uh, I also did a video on the 2.6 inch kit, which is a little bit larger than the 2.45 as you can see by, oh wow, my, uh, my filming lights are not doing those any favors, are they? <laughs> um, you can see that the screen itself is a little bit bigger on the 2.6 inch kit. Um, and this one was laminated and I did show the process of trimming the shell. Uh, but the problem was that this ended up being like a, a one-off thing. Um, because the, the powers that be, uh, rather the stores selling the kits decided they didn't want to deal with the support nightmare of of uh, unleashing these upon the general public because it is a little bit more of an advanced install. However, the 2.45 kit, they did end up releasing as a regular laminated kit, and I've got one of those right here. So the difference between the install that I did and the install we're gonna do today is that the new screen is actually properly laminated to the lens, which means uh, that there's no air gap, there's not going to be any chance for dust or anything like that, and you'll have to forgive me, I, I have been handling this thing already because of who I am as a person. And um, But overall, it, it's going to result in a little bit more uh, light transmission. Um, it Just in general, I personally think it looks better. Uh, not to mention, you can see the screen itself is a little bit darker when you hold it at an angle. This is the laminated one. This one is not. Of course, that is somewhat misleading because this lens is a dark gray, whereas this lens is black. So I understand if you're looking at this going, hey, you say it's darker, but it doesn't look dark. Well, yes, the screen area is, but the lens area isn't because they're just simply different color lenses. Um, trust me. I think it's going to look a little bit better, uh, but we'll have to we'll have to burn that bridge when we get there because I don't actually have this installed yet, and that's what this hunk of junk Game Boy Color is for. We're going to go ahead and get that installed in here, replacing the um, amalgam kits that I have holding this thing together. I will go ahead and set these off to the side for now. So, like I said, since I've already done the video. Uh, for this Game Boy Color. I'm not going to bother doing any of like the power usage um, and I'm not going to do most of the like videos uh, frame tearing blah 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 sort of testing. Um, I'll have to refer you to the previous video that I did if you're interested in that sort of data. It's going to be all the same for this kit. It's going to be all applicable. Uh, we're just going to go over, we're mostly going to go over um, focus on the shell trimming. Uh, so let me go ahead and get this torn down. Totally forgot it had batteries in it. As you can see, it does work. The laminated screen is totally crooked, so I have it set aside for testing because it's basically useless in a build, but it does work and it's good enough for testing. Um, same thing with the actual kit itself. It does work, it's just an older one and I've got enough kits, you know, I'll use the newer ones that work a little bit better, but anyway. Let's go ahead and get this torn down. Um, it's not going to be that difficult since there's literally only the one screw holding everything together. Let me go ahead and throw my screwdriver. And at some point we'll have to, oops, we'll have to chuck a speaker in here too. Whoa. I'll just detach that. Alright, so I am going to set this thing aside for torture another day. Uh, 
All right. So first off, let's go over um, testing this kit because that should be the first step that we take. Um, let me go ahead and get this thing detached and let's get a speaker in here. Uh, I am going to now nah, go ahead and pull the wire out just so you guys see the process from the beginning. I should pull that off too. Just for safekeeping, come on. Since this thing is totally working. By the way, don't get solder on these gold contacts. It is very not great. Um, solder does oxidize, um, and it's going to result in some really poor connections, especially over time. In this specific case, I'm fairly certain that last pin is redundant, so it's not going to be too big of a deal, but we're not talking about this thing. So move on. All right. So we want to test this thing. I'm fairly certain it has to be soldered together to be tested. I'll try it out anyway. So the kit comes with the adapter PCB, the ribbon that goes between the PCB and the Game Boy Color, and then the screen itself. And you've also got an adhesive gasket for adhering this to the housing, and a little bit of acrylic for a spacer. Um, we'll get into that stuff later. Um, first up, let's go ahead and get that in there. And I'm going to grab this rear housing here. Drop this thing in. Oh yeah, and this thing has one of those transparent funny playing button LED kits. Oh, I didn't even check to see if this thing was corroded. Good thing it isn't. Alright. Now we need to get this plugged in. I am having a hard time remembering how this goes. Fairly certain this goes in on the LCD side. We have to lift this bale up from the back. Usually they lift up from the front. And we can close it like that. And then same thing on this side. Except we really should have done that in the other order, but this is fine. And, okay, so I can see that it is powered up, but because I didn't actually attach the wire to anything, I have no backlight on the screen. Uh, I'd have to shine a really bright light in there. If I get the lighting just right, maybe it'll... Nah, you'll just have to take my word for it. Otherwise, we do have to solder this wire to test it. I am going to drop it onto SW1 VCC VIA just for testing, and you can see it is indeed working perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and get this thing soldered together and just for reference, let me show you exactly what I just did. So I had this wire in hand and I went ahead and dropped it into the SW1 VIA or VCC. Both should work in this case just for testing and you can see the screen comes on when I hold it there. So since we know that works, we're good to go ahead and get this thing soldered together. I'm going to detach the board from the uh, Game Boy Color and set this aside for now. Let's pop this out. And this does come with a longer wire uh, usually there's a little bit more stripped on the end there, or at least I thought there usually is. The intent is that you can route this thing 
down and throw that through that hoop there and you can just wrap the end of this wire around this positive battery terminal kind of like that except you'd want it stripped um, personally I the vendor of the kit says that this is okay I think it's really bad practice and since I'm personally capable of soldering I'm going to go ahead and solder it if you're looking at this going well the vendor says it's okay blah 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 and you know you're really not comfortable with soldering and that's the only thing standing between you and doing the and doing an install like this go ahead and wrap it it'll probably be fine uh, just do yourself a favor and never leave batteries in the console when you're not using it um, but Sure, it'll, it'll be fine. And realistically, you shouldn't leave batteries in the console ever anyway, but just be on the safe side. But we'll get a cleaner looking install, I think. We won't have to worry about routing this wire. And to get this soldered down, I'm going to go ahead and get that tinned, and then I'm going to tin the uh, C pin on the power switch, the one labeled C. And get that soldered down, and that's pretty much it. While we're here, let's go ahead and get a speaker installed. Uh, I am going to use... I don't know if I want to use the blue one. Mm, yeah, let's use the blue one. So I'm going to try out these new er, Cloud Game Store speakers. Um, they come with a little JST connector on the end there. Uh, my understanding is that the intent is they're making something that you can plug this into. Um, I don't know... Like, this This is speculation. I don't know anything about this. Uh, but my speculation is that they're making their own Game Boy Color, uh, like, console or motherboard or something, and they're gonna have the speaker connector on there. So that's what these speakers are for. Of course, this is a Game Boy Advance speaker. <sighs> Good lord. What is wrong with you? You know what? It'll work anyway. Screw it. Um, yeah, the intent is you could just plug it straight into their boards. It's to make it easier for them, but I don't know. I, I don't know what the heck they're doing. I saw they also had new link port connectors made, and like, yay, that's pretty neat, but I have no idea how long it's going to take for them to get anything done, and I can't imagine it's going to be anytime soon, because last time I asked them for an ETA, uh, I remember it was October of 2020, I believe. And they had just come out with the um, first version of the 2.6 inch backlight kit, but for Game Boy Pocket. And uh, everyone wanted to know when it was going to be available for Game Boy Color. I had done a video on it. I asked them about it and they said, oh yeah, by December. And they were right, it was by December, but it took them a whole year and not a month, like they said. It was well, a year and a month. It was available, I think, by, like, January 2022 or something ridiculous like that. 2020? I don't know. I remember it took them over a year. It was, it was a whole process. But anyway, let's move on. I'm going to get this board disconnected. Just so that I can handle this LCD a little bit more freely because we're going to be doing a lot of fit checking. Uh, I will set that in here. Oh, I should probably test to make sure that that speaker actually works. 
I can't imagine it doesn't, but... Yeah, okay. It's fine. It's quiet, but that could just be the Game Boy. Ta-da! Alright. Let's set this aside. So, we have three options for shells. I'm just going to grab the front shells here. We have... Oh, and I didn't open up this one. Ultimately, this is the one that I'm going to be using because of who I am as a person. So we'll discuss this one last. Or at least, we'll do the trim on that one last. So I've got three different shells here. The first one that we'll discuss is the Funny Playing Laminated Game Boy Color shells. Uh, these are intended for their uh, Q5 LCDs. Uh, ooh, I thought I had this open. I'm sorry. So these shells are intended for use with these kits that use these LCDs. These are, I call them Q5 LCDs, literally because this LCD is made and designed for and salvaged from, in a lot of cases, a BlackBerry Q5. That is literally what the name comes from. But anyway, these shells are designed for this kit. The LCD just drops right in just like that. Easy peasy. Um, but that means that some of the other LCDs don't exactly work. However, the laminated Cloud Game Store LCD also just happens to drop right in. Uh, the, <clears throat> the only caveat is that there's no screen adhesive on the lens. So you'll have to figure something else out for that. Let me get some water. All right, that's better. That sound better, feels better. Anyway, um, it does clear all of the, shelv the shelving here and the cutouts nicely. Um, like I said, the only real caveat is that it's missing uh, adhesive to hold the lens on to the body, um, but that shouldn't be a problem uh, if you guys save the little little square pads uh, from like the center of lenses, you could just cut strips off of this and use that. That'll be fine. Uh, otherwise, 3M300 LSE tape tends to be the bee's knees for this sort of thing. Uh, but if you're a Game Boy modding, you know that's that's it. So these uh, housings do work for these kits. Uh, I'm of the opinion that if you're getting one of these housings, I mean, you might as well get the Q5 screen because it is going to be a little bit bigger. It's basically the difference between these two. This is the same size as the Q5, even though it's not a Q5. Uh, but if I put those side to side, you can see the screen is a little bit bigger. Uh, but the downside with the larger screens is that the lens bezel area is a little bit smaller, which personally, if you're a fan of the plain bezels, is totally fine. But if you want something custom, uh, like like this one with the uh, Pokemon second generation prints on it, you can't really get those for the funny playing stuff, whereas you can for the Cloud Game Store stuff, but that's only in the 2.45 inch kits. So, you know, trade-offs. And quite frankly, I, I think this lens matches this shell surprisingly well. Like, the aesthetic is totally, totally off, but I don't know. It, it feels like it fits. It feels almost like, you know, we, we, we got to get uh, Lucy, Rebecca, and then Davido, uh, David on a custom lens there, but whatever, that, that's, that's for another time. So funny playing is pretty darn easy, and by the way, uh, shout out to RetroVice for designing this shell. Um, they sell these on Retro Game Repair Shop, and I'm fairly certain they're sold out, but it's just, I, I think it looks really cool. I'm excited to do a build with this, but that build is not this video. Uh, anyway, let's move on. We're going to take a look at these two now. Uh, this teal-ish colored shell is an OEM Game Boy Color shell um, that still even has the adhesive in there that I totally forgot to remove and didn't realize was still in there. Um, but this is 
the shell that most Game Boys are going to come in, though, maybe a little bit more worn down and perhaps not the same color. Uh, but this thing is going to fit these kits as long as you don't get the laminated version. Unfortunately, if you do get the laminated version, there's a little bit of trimming to do. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't quite fit. Uh, the trimming, of course, is going to be pretty similar to what we have to do on this shell here. You can see it doesn't quite fit in there, but the trimming for this shell is going to be a little bit less significant because if we put these, well, if we stack them, you can see the window on the Cloud Game Store shells is a little bit bigger because it is designed to be compatible with all of their kits, including the larger 2.6 inch one. Uh, so that means there's just less window to trip. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and start with this one. The process is going to be the same for both. So I'm going to do this one on screen and show you. And then I'm going to do this one probably off screen because it's going to be a whole lot more of the exact same thing. Um, and this video is already going to be ridiculous. So let's try and not make it too long. Anyway. The easiest way to do this sort of trim is obviously to start with a clear shell, put the screen where it needs to go, and then trace your line on the inside. This isn't a clear shell. I want to show you guys what I do for opaque shells. Uh, now we have to do this in multiple steps, and unfortunately it, it's kind of awkward because the cutting we want to do is going to be on the outside, but our best chance at getting the alignment is going to be on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this ribbon or the, the screen assembly up with the cutouts in the, uh, in the plastic. So I'm lining up the edge, let me, I'm lining up the edge of the lens here with that little divot in the plastic. You can see the edge right about where I marked. Um, it's probably not coming out too well on video, but Either way, uh, I'm centering this thing with it between those two uh, shelves on either side and then putting it about halfway up, maybe a little bit more. Uh, it doesn't matter too much. Oops, cap's already off. And then all I'm going to do is make a few marks on the inside that are to the outside of where the LCD sits. And we can extend these marks all the way up and down uh, as soon as we get as soon as we get everything located. Now I'm going to turn it and do the exact same thing for the top and bottom. Uh, the difference here is that I kind of have to eyeball it based on the top because the bottom is curved. Uh, but we're going to do the marks and then doo -doo -doo. just like that. Now I can set that aside and I'm just going to freehand it. I'm sure it'll be fine. I can straighten out the lines later. Oh no, my brand new Sharpie. And then this top one we almost don't have to do because it's right up to uh, that wall there. All right, and so we have two options for trimming this. There's the easy way and then the clean way. And what we get, there it is. I have these flush cutters that have this ridiculous angle on them that make that make for easy trimming. Uh, so I guess I guess I'll show both methods. I'll use the the easy way on this shell, and then we'll show you the clean way on the other one. Uh, but really, all we're doing is coming in here. If I can figure out a good angle to do this, I think we'll do it from. 
underneath. The problem is I don't want to cut at an angle. I want to cut straight, but I can't. Yeah, never mind. There we go. I'll start that right there, and then we'll come at it from the other side. And we're just going to follow the line relatively close. Doesn't have to be perfect. And just make our way around. Cut a relief there so I don't discolor the plastic. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna have to take that in multiple passes because the tool just doesn't go that deep. And regular flush cutters do work the same. It's just more difficult with the angle of the tool. You have much less, uh, much less to get at. Plus, with the with the grips on this thing, I with this particular set of flush cutters is not going to work too well. But this one has more recessed grips that happens to be working a little bit better. I don't know. We'll we'll make it work. But as you can see there, I cut it, and because the tool tried forcing its way in where there wasn't plastic, it did start discoloring the plastic. It didn't extend all the way to my cut line, so it's not going to make that big of a difference, but just keep that in mind that you'll want to cut reliefs periodically so that you don't mess up portions of the plastic that are going to be visible. Otherwise, we'll just keep making our way down town to the corner. I'm gonna try and clean up that cut line I did. I'm having a hard time though because the tool doesn't quite fit where I want it to. And it doesn't matter if we cut a little bit too much, it'll be fine. Oh, so right there, I definitely should have cut a relief, but I didn't. And now our plastic's discolored. 
but I'm pretty sure all of that's going to be hidden by the lens, so it doesn't matter too much. just occurred to me that I, I probably just did something that most people <laughs> won't do uh, and that I just totally switched hands with the tool. Um, I am one of those weirdos who uses both hands somewhat interchangeably depending on what I'm doing. Otherwise just spin the thing around. Doesn't matter if it's upside down. I don't know. It's just easier, I think, to approach from this side. On this side of the housing, at least. But just like that, we're all done. And you don't have to worry about how close that is to the edge there, because there's still plenty of actual um, material to grip for the lens. We just want to make sure it clears the LCD. All right, good enough. Time for a fit check. Ta-da. We're pretty much done. Um, there isn't anything else I have to do for trimming this. I could just install this and call it a day, uh, but I don't actually want to install this in this shell, uh, at the very least not without running it through the ultrasonic first. But if you want to show off your, your, your clean modding skills, um, get yourself a big bastard file. That's the name, I'm not just you know, giving it nicknames. And you can smooth out your edges and make it nice and clean looking. Uh, so it doesn't, doesn't look as nasty. I'm not gonna finish doing that because it's making lots of plastic dust and that ain't good to inhale. So we'll move on. But that is the easy way at the very least. Um, I think it's pretty easy. A little bit more time consuming and messy, uh, but it certainly works, and if you're not comfortable using a utility knife, then it's probably the way to go. The other option. Oh, that was, that was wise. Let me get this dust cleaned up, otherwise I'm gonna make a mess of this shell. Pro tip, a little bit of masking tape. Goes a long way. not getting this stuff in your lungs when cleaning up. Also, it's about the most effective way I've found for cleaning these silicone mats. Because they just they kind of hang on to everything, you know? Anyway, just bolt that up. All right. Next up gonna put these away. Uh, I will send, uh, put a link to these tools in the description. Um, this is my first time using it in this manner and that's actually super, super convenient for this particular use. I was skeptical, I admit, but there you go. Anyway, the other way, the way that I usually trim these sort of shells, uh, you can see doing a fit check, doesn't quite fit. Uh, so we're going to have to do pretty much the same thing. Uh, let's get it marked up here. And as you can see, I've got to trim the top and the bottom here. The top, uh, 
do I have that lined up? Yeah, give or take. Top looks to be pretty much the same trim, so I'm going to mark that out. Just for the sake of total clarity. And then on the bottom here, same thing. Looks like it goes to about there. Not a perfect marking, but good enough. And then if we check the sides, we can see that because this is a cloud game store shell, it's actually already wide enough. We don't have to trim out the sides. Um, so it's going to make cutting a little bit easier. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to do the score and snap method, which I'm a little bit worried about on this uh, electroplated shell, um, especially cutting from the bottom. So I'm thinking maybe I'm going to cut from the top. work the way I think it does. Almost. I got an easier way though. We'll just look at that and then you can uh, copy my cuts here. All right. I've got it. There's an easy way to tell. We're gonna find this little divot. The injection molding. Um, there's a name, totally forgetting it. But I'm gonna mark it basically right there. And then on top, I think we can do about the same thing. Um, quite frankly, I'm just gonna eyeball it though. I think that'll be fine. Because what I can do is I can take my tweezers and just jam them up against that wall and then flip it over and look to see on the other side where the tip is and I can see it's right on my line. So I was spot on when I eyeballed that. Uh, this way, however, I'm gonna cut it a little bit short. Uh, my utility blade does lock. Unfortunately, it's a lot looser than I'd like. Um, but that's because cheapo. Um, but anyway, all I'm going to do is approximately following my line using a very light amount of pressure. I am going to score the plastic and just walk the tool from one end of the line to the other. Very light amount of pressure. Once you've got the first score in place, the subsequent ones are usually pretty easy because uh, the blade is mostly going to stay in the rut that you've already created. We're not using a ton of pressure here. The entire point is literally to just score it. We don't want to cut through. Cutting through is going to be bad. Uh, next we're going to do the sides here. walked all off that line. Oh well, easy enough to fix. And then once we've got that sufficiently scored, I'm going to come in here with some pliers. Usually use longer ones, but I'm just going to grip that and then just bend it down. Grip that. Try and like break it free, bend it down. Ooh, that's brittle. That's a little concerning for the score and snap method, but I think we'll be fine. I 
and you can see the plastic snaps right along that score line. And that's it. And the reason I called this the clean method is because look at how many fewer pieces we have. But also because once you've got that snapped off, you can come back here with the knife and clean up the edges. Uh, you can also do this with the file. Uh, one thing to note when using the knife like this, never cut towards yourself or in a manner such that if it slips, you don't want it to slip into anything that is going to get, that you can't replace. Like, I could do this, cut like this, probably be fine, but I'm cutting towards myself and that's a little bit dangerous. If it slips, it's probably not going anywhere because my thumb is very far out of the way, but let's just be safe. You know, it, it takes just a few extra seconds to not totally ruin your life, you know? I like having two thumbs, so I'm going to do my best to, to keep the status quo, I guess. And just like that. Now we got to do the bottom. I gotta clean this up. The um, electroplating paint kind of snapped off and and um, disintegrated. And on the bottom here, have to be careful of that divot. Blade's gonna wanna jump around. But that's why we go nice and slow with very little pressure. We take multiple passes. One downside of scoring this on the outside is if at the end of your, your um, pull, if you skip the knife out, you're going to nick the side and it's going to be very visible. That is why you only use a little bit of pressure and do several passes. It's much safer to do like 20 passes with almost no pressure than to do five passes with heavy pressure because the the likelihood of it slipping when there's no pressure is a lot less. Totally missed the line again. Notice how I moved my thumb. I don't think it was in danger. But why take the chance? Like I said, I like my thumb. Also, fresh blades are good. Don't use the same freaking blade for like 20 years. You don't need you don't need to do that. Blades are really cheap for uh, these sorts of knives. A dull blade is more dangerous than a sharp one. Not to say a sharp one isn't dangerous, but you know what I mean. Anyway. Easy. Now we'll do a fit check. And if all went well, that'll just drop right in. And it's not. But only because the hole is really tight. 
Uh, it's actually the, the glass lens that's rubbing up against the <laughs> electroplated shell. As far as the LCD goes though, it's got plenty of clear. Oh, no, nah, maybe we should trim a little bit more down there, just in case. Well, you can see that's where I, I, I curved it and kind of missed my line. But that's it, that should be good enough. Go ahead and pause real quick and get this cleaned up again. And then we'll uh, finish the install. Ta da! Alright. I didn't mark up the shell too bad. In fact, I don't think I marked it up at all. At least, nowhere visible. There's plenty of scars in the uh, display compartment. Next, we need a little bit of adhesive. Uh, like I said, you can just reuse those um, little squares from the inside of LCD lenses. Oh, I gotta move the camera to get my drawer out. Okay. Reason being, I wanted to see if I had one of these that I had already cut up just to be a little bit less wasteful. Save the uncut ones for other things like labels and such. Uh, I should check both sides, whoops. Eh, it'll be fine. She'll be right. That one, on the other hand, is a little bit too thick. They both are. Measure once, cut twice. Let's make a cutout for the LED. Not that it makes a huge difference, because this tape is transparent, but it'll be prettier if we don't tape over the LED. Um, I suppose this Game Boy is not going to be a shining example of that, because this Game Boy has a really crappy power LED in there. But it's good enough. Don't need a ton of it. Ta da! That's looking good. in there. Ah, uh, I 
already totally forgot. Okay, never mind, I got it. Just like that, we need the buttons. Now I just need to find some screws. I highly recommend using the screws that come with your shell. Um, in this case, because of who I am as a person, I have no idea where those are. But I've also taken apart several Game Boys already and just kind of left the screws there, so I have a vague idea of what I'm doing. Also need a power switch and an IR window. Oh, and we should probably do something about that touch sensor, huh? I don't care for it, usually, but no sense in uh, putting it to waste. Is that... I'm trying to figure out which one of these I didn't use. Okay. I wonder how well this is going to work on this uh, electroplated shell. These things work significantly better when actually stuck down to the shell. Got a little bit of double-sided tape on it, and then I'm just going to jam it up against the plastic right there. Just, you know, remember that's stuck down if you ever take this thing apart, because otherwise that's getting ripped off. I think, Alternatively, you can just kind of flex it around and then the pressure from the ribbon should hold it into place, but I wouldn't rely on that. And I know that's not the right power switch, but I want to see if it works anyway. Ah, oh, shoot. I'm missing something. I have to go find the parts for this thing. 
or just borrow them from another shell. I'm probably missing a battery terminal too. Electrically, this part is not necessary, even though it does provide um, EMR shielding. Uh, but you don't really want your cart sliding up against the CPU. That's going to be a less than optimal experience. Fits shockingly well. That is a GBA SP power switch. I think the regular Game Boy Color one fits a lot better, but. All right, and because I'm screwing plastic into pl or metal into plastic, the screw is metal. Excuse me. Um, to tighten these down, I'm bottoming the screw out and then backing them up an eighth of a turn and then leaving them there. It's it's going to be strong enough doing that, uh, and this way we're not going to crack any of the screw terminals and um, screw terminals. Screw posts, that's what they're called. I think this is for Game Boy Advance. Is that going to work anyway? Uh, we could modify it, but I'll just pull the one out of the Game Boy Color here. And the screw, or the shell, should be coming with this. I just. I'm in the middle of um, redoing my entire setup. And the first thing I did when I got this package was I dumped it all out into a pile and now that pile has become a bigger pile and I'm still sorting through that pile. And rather than pause the video and go sort through that for an hour, which I will gladly do, um, but I'll never finish the video if I do that. I'm just going to use that and then when I find the parts I'll probably do nothing with them because I don't think I'm ever reusing that other shell anyway. But if all goes well, we've got a perfectly working Game Boy Color. Let's uh, 
kill the lights here and you can see it a little bit better. So I've got that um, funny playing LED button backlight kit in there. Um, this specific kit does have a little bit of an issue and obviously it's not working right. Uh, but you can still see that it is indeed working. Um, but otherwise, the screen looks fantastic. Where did I put the sensor? Right there, it seems. And it does indeed work through the shell. That's convenient. Also, my power LED is... Uh, actually, it doesn't look like it's on at all. It's usually on, but very dim, but now it's not on at all. Uh, this specific motherboard had a damaged power LED, and... In my inexperience, I did attempt to fix it a few years ago, and I just haven't revisited it because I don't really care that much about the power LED, but there we go. Uh, same features as it as the other version of the kit that I already did the video on. Uh, we can tap to change the brightness settings, and it is going to remember those settings after a power cycle, and if we press and hold, we can cycle through the pixel grid modes, the color filters, and then the color filter pixel grid mode. Uh, so now we're on black and white with the pixel grid. Uh, no pixel grid, no color filter, and then pixel grid, no color filter, no pixel grid, but color filter, and then both again, and then neither. Uh, so the 2.6 inch version of this kit does actually include um, several different pixel grid modes. Uh, I don't know why they haven't included that on this kit, but uh, personally I don't think you're missing out too much. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the pixel grid modes. They do look better on the 2.6 inch version because you do have more options or uh, like different styles, like in this case, you've got only vertical here. Um, now you've got vertical and horizontal with the color filter. None, and then just horizontal and, and so on. And you can go through all these now, just vertical, etc. cetera. Um, but for some reason, Cloud Game Store only gives you the one option for pixel grid, all on or all off or color filter and all on or all off. Uh, one thing to note, the brightness is not changing on this thing as I cycle through those modes. That is the pixel grid that is limiting the effect of brightness. Now these aren't exceedingly bright kits to begin with, um, so it's not the best experience having them on, but with it off, it still does look fantastic. It is laminated. Uh, unfortunately, it is still a TFT screen, um, TFT, it is a TN screen and not an IPS type screen, which means that the viewing angles aren't going to be as good as something like an IPS, but it's still a really good TN screen with really good viewing angles. Um, just not as good as it could be. And realistically, are you really playing your Game Boy at an angle? No, you're going to be playing it straight on. So. I personally don't think it's a problem, uh, but it is going to make it a little bit more difficult to get good pictures for the Insta if you care about ridiculous things like that. Um, otherwise, let me grab a game cart. Got Pokemon Silver in my gold Game Boy because, of course, I do. And as you can hear, I've, I've got volume. That's working. It's not very loud. But again, I'm pretty sure that's the Game Boy Color and not the mod. Uh-oh. Well, it's a good thing I backed up the save on this thing. Eight. Wow. And twenty. Three min nope, twenty-four minutes. I've done several builds in these Cloud Game Store shells now, and every single time I've done it, I've always been thoroughly impressed with the quality 
of the shells, like the, the fit and finish. Um, I am a really big fan of like the, the crystal one in particular. I really like the gloss texture on that. I think it looks really good, um, especially on the clear one. The clear one and the crystal are both absolutely fantastic. But I mean, obviously the gold one is fantastic too. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I think I'm gonna have to take that uh, <laughs> LED kit out of there. That explains a lot. Uh, but whatever, that's that's something for a different video. Um, otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. If you guys want to go over my thoughts on the on this kit itself, uh, like I said, there's that other video. Um, but I'll sum it up. It's a really good kit. I'm really pleased with it. I think there are better options. Uh, but everything has its trade-offs. And like I said, the trade-offs for something like this, between the 2.6 and the 2.45 kits from the exact same vendor, I think the 2.6 is better hands down. But like I said, the trade-off is you have smaller bezels, which means you can't get these neat custom lenses for it. Or I guess you can, but it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, and you don't have nearly as much room for art on them. Uh, if you're actually sitting down and playing your Game Boys, and let's be real, not all of you are, especially if you're building something as gaudy as this. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter what's what's the best kit and blah blah blah. This is good. I like this. There are better options, but there are trade-offs. This is really good on power, it looks really good, the, uh, the blend of options is nice, and it just works. It's really easy to install, Etc. Etc. I can I can go on and on. Um, I have linked in the description a link to a site I set up, which is realistically just um, like a README hosted on the GitHub Pages thing. Uh, but that has links to all of like tools and such that I use. But it also has links to the Game Boy Wiki. Uh, that's a passion project of mine. It's it's basically my baby. I maintain that and there is a page on there that is linked on, on my personal page there um, that takes you to a wiki of all of the backlight kits that I have ever gotten my hands on. This is in there, my thoughts are in there, um, and you can compare and contrast my thoughts on that kit with my thoughts on all the other kits. It's probably a lot quicker than clicking on all the video links in the wiki because each one of these darn things is anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half because of who I am as a person. Um, but, you know, if you like my content, whatever, throw it on in the background, listen while you're working on something else, or... Uh, uh, you know what? Do what you want. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Uh, but the information's out there. Um, feel free to look it up. Like I said, I don't think it's the best kit. It's not a bad kit. I just think that there are better options for my specific tastes. Uh, when it comes to backlight kits. Um, does that mean it's the best kit for you? Maybe, maybe not. Y you gotta weigh the pros and cons for yourself and, and make a decision. And if you value highly having custom art like this, then obviously this is gonna be one of the best kits because the other kits don't do that. The Funny Playing Q5 kits that I showed off earlier, this is about the extent to the customization that you get you get a solid color and then the um, logo itself is illuminated by the screen. Don't like black? Well, you can get yellow, you can get the, this DMG style one that's about the fanciest. They've got white, um, there's blue, there's red, there's color. There's plenty of basic colors, but nothing like this. So there you go. I think that's about all I've got. Um, again, the laminated kit or laminated housing did was by far the easiest to install this kit in since literally nothing needed to be trimmed. You just drop it in and it just it just works. Uh, but I don't know. These ones come in way cooler finishes, if you know what I mean. Anyway. Links in the description. Uh, big shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this stuff my way to play out. 
Uh, they don't pay for these videos. They don't really review them. Um, they, they have no editorial uh, authority over my videos. I, I publish what content I want to publish. Um, and they're, they're not paying me for this stuff. Like, this is all my own opinions. Um, I genuinely like this stuff, and I like Retro Game Repair Shop's attitude. I like how they've been supporting me and basically keeping hands off. You know, they're, they're just giving me toys to play with and, and letting me have fun. And I have... It, it hits more often than not, but that's not to say that I just blindly praise them. There have been times where I've said, hey, this is hot garbage, and I publish videos on it. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure Retro Game Repair Shop has looked at that and went, oh, well, I've got a few hundred of these things. How am I supposed to sell that with, with your video on the page? But, you know what? It is what it is. Um, I'm trying to be as unbiased as I can be. Obviously, there's going to be some subconscious bias, but I like it. I think it's good. That's the truth of the matter. And uh, I think that's all I've got. There's going to be some links in the description if you want to check out this specific stuff. Um, otherwise, like I said, this is from Cloud Game Store. You can get it direct from their AliExpress listing. Uh, but if you're in the U.S., it's going to be a heck of a lot quicker to order from Retro Game Repair Shop. Uh, they usually ship within a few days, and USPS is usually pretty good um, in within the contiguous United States. Uh, obviously, if you're outside the United States, you probably got other options you want to take a look at, but I'm not familiar with those because I'm not outside of the United States. Um, anyway, I will keep rambling all night if you let me, so I'm going to cut this one off here. Uh, thanks for watching, and keep on being awesome.